Yo, what's up, Serpa Squad? Tanner here, and I'm back with another terrarium build. Over the years, I've made an array of terrariums in various types of containers. The more obscure ones are often challenging to work with, but for me, that's part of the fun and exactly what I'll show in this video. In this one, I'll demonstrate how I made an hourglass terrarium that really tested my patience. Let's get to work. As with any terrarium, we need a proper container. For this one, that will be an hourglass. There's no way I can turn this into a terrarium without a few major modifications. For that, I'll drill a few holes with a diamond tip tool saw. Initially, I tried to use the putty method I typically use when drilling aquariums. You put down a ring of putty, fill it with water, and drill away. Unfortunately, that resulted in a broken hourglass. I tried this again on a different style of glass. I thought I may have applied inconsistent pressure and was more careful this time around. I did manage to get through one side just fine, but the second ended up shattering as well. I realized the putty method wasn't working for me. I presumed I wasn't steady enough with the drill and the reverberations caused the glass to shatter. After all, the glass is pretty thin. I decided instead to make a guide out of corrugated plastic. In theory, this should help me keep the drill steadier. It's pretty much the same concept as the putty. The plastic is taped over the container and filled with water to create a reservoir. At first this was promising. I made it through one side with relative ease. That was a different story with the second hole. I ended up cracking the glass once more. Again, I thought I was probably being inconsistent. I tried again with the guide, but this time I drilled much slower. To this point, I ended up going through three hourglasses. Although I ended up with a few minor cracks, I was finally able to make it work. So I went on to spray the container to remove the sand and debris. It was looking really promising and I was finally ready to escape the terrarium. That was until I accidentally dropped the hourglass on the floor. At this point I almost gave up with the project altogether. I don't like wasting materials and it seemed like it wouldn't happen. I wasn't going to be defeated just yet. I went out and got more. The first two were the same as before and both ended in failure. My last effort was on a piece with flat sides. This is what I was expecting from the first one. It worked flawlessly. However, the container is quite small and I didn't want it to be my only option. I also did a lot of work for the larger one I dropped on the floor. Luckily, I was able to find a bigger version of this one and again it worked with absolutely no issues. Six hourglasses later, and I finally found something that worked with ease. This is definitely possible with the others, but I don't have the proper equipment to make it happen consistently. The containers are very fragile, and one mistake will cost everything. Luckily, the flat ones are much easier to work with. I figured it would be really beneficial to show this process, so any of you looking to replicate this will know what works well. My guess is that if you are familiar with drilling glass, you'll be able to get it on the first try. I made a few other components by cutting out small discs from a sheet of plastic. Each hourglass will have three. Two for the bottom, one of which has a hole drilled through, and another for the top. I also cut out a few strips of knitting mesh. Stainless steel staples were used to transform the mesh into cylinders. One is the size of the container's opening, and the other is slightly smaller. I used hot glue to attach these to the plastic discs. The large one is for the disc with an opening, and the small one is for the other. The piece with the opening was glued to the bottom of each container. Here's how they look now. Let's get to scaping. The first thing I need to address is the sand stream that flows between the compartments. I'll use moss to mimic this look. I experimented with a few ideas and decided that the best way to create this feature was with paracord and stainless steel wire. I fed the wire through the cord to make it more rigid. A small section of wire will remain exposed so it can be secured to the container. I also glued the frayed ends of the cord around the wire. Prior to adding the moss, I covered the cord with super glue and cocoa fiber.
This will create a textured growing surface for the moss. For this one, I'm using tangled thread moss. I secured sheets of it on the cocoa fiber stick with glue. The underside of the moss is so thick that the glue shouldn't have any effect on the moss's health. To secure these to the container, I put a dab of hot glue on the wire. Then I used tweezers to put the piece in place. A dab of glue is also put on the top of the wire through the top compartment to better secure everything. From there I could add the false bottom. To keep things simple, I'll just use sand for these. I made a little tool out of PEX pipe and hot glue to distribute the sand. I picked it up with the tool and gradually dispersed it throughout the bottom of the containers. This took a while, but I preferred to take my time so nothing else was disturbed. After that, I poured sand into the top compartment. Now I can add the substrate. I'm using my typical blend, which also includes activated carbon. Since it's mixed in, I won't have to make a dedicated charcoal layer. I was able to use tweezers to add this to each container. Like the sand, this took a little while, but it was worth the time. Doing it this way allowed me to keep everything clean and intact. Once I built up enough substrate, I could add the moss, which is the same as what I used previously. First I situated patches around the mesh insert to cover all of the substrate. I used my tweezers and a wire to manipulate them with ease. With everything covered, excluding the mesh opening, I gave the containers a quick spray. Now that they're watered, I can add the final piece of moss. In doing so, I wanted to cover the opening and have the moss connect with the cord. To complete the bottom portion of the terrariums, I filled the mesh inserts with a little bit of sand and substrate. I applied hot glue along the plastic and pressed the hourglass over top of this to seal the opening. Then I went on to complete the top of the terrariums. These are really quite simple. Since I already addressed the false bottom, all I had to do was add a layer of substrate. That of course was topped off with a nice patch of moss. Like before, I glued a piece of plastic over the opening to seal everything up. At this point the terrariums are done, but I want to add embellishments. For the larger hourglass, I started by cutting a few dowel rods that are slightly taller than the container. From there I glued thumbtacks to a board so the dowels can easily be painted. I applied two coats of metallic gold spray paint to give them the appearance of bronze. I also have a few wooden plaques that will hold everything together. I made a few measurements on the corners and drilled holes for the dowels. To give the piece a prestigious look, I stained the wood with Provincial 2 on 1. This should go well with the brass look of the dowels. Once the stain was dry, I added three coats of polyurethane to get a shiny finish. Felt pads were stuck to the bottom piece to finish it off. From there I put glue inside of the openings and secured the dowels. A blob of glue was put on the base and the hourglass was placed over the top. After that I applied glue to the top piece and attached it accordingly. I also got a strand of cotton rope and glued it around the hourglass to make things more finished. The smaller glass was much simpler. 
I just glued a piece of wood on the top and bottom. I also added a strand of faux leather around the glass. And there you have it, my take on an hourglass terrarium. Not only that, but a two for one. We have the mini version and the deluxe edition. I really like how these turned out, especially the larger terrarium. For me, these are more about the concept and not a groundbreaking scape. The idea of having a moss hourglass is pretty cool. I decided not to add springtails to these terrariums due to logistics. Like I've said in other videos, all terrariums will benefit from them, but they are not a necessity for success. Regardless, they should do fine. My hope is that the moss will continue to fill in the space, making the concept of these terrariums even more apparent. This build was really challenging, and like I said earlier in the video, I felt it best to show that process. I know that terrariums don't always work on the first try, but that's no reason to give up. After setting up countless terrariums of various shapes, sizes, styles, and materials, even I don't always succeed. Sometimes you just really have to want things to work and push through the hardship of failure. After all, those mishaps make this successful project all the more enjoyable. Anyway, that's all I have for you in this one. As always, I really hope you enjoyed the project and learned something new. Until next time, Serpa Squad, take care and peace.